people yeah. have often witnessed life inside engineering colleges through movies like three idiots but yeah. only engineers actually know what is the reality could you just tell our viewers that what is a typical day like in iit bombay why did you choose iit bombay why not any other iit or perhaps an institute abroad One, two, three, four, five, six, Hi, Eknu. Thank you so much for speaking to Times Now. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Pradeepi, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure for me too. Yeah. Okay. So, Eknu, your JE scores were obviously good. Uh, you were one of the toppers as well. But why did you choose IIT Bombay? Why not any other IIT or perhaps an institute abroad? Before I move on to answer that question, let's quickly talk about an academy's Excel 2.0 batch since J mains ke abhi abhi result aaye hain. Lot of people might be considering drop karne ka, and this is the perfect opportunity to restart, kickstart with India's top educators because class 11th and 12th ka complete syllabus, proper conceptual understanding se systematically J level ki problem solve karte hue. You can also become one of the people like these who top J mains. 2022 an academy ke top educator se padke there is also a special offer going on where an academy accelerate gives you a chance to save up to 43% with free extension of up to 6 months on your plus and iconic subscriptions aap screen pe dekh sakte hain ye kitne effective prices pe abhi aapko mil rahi hai and it's time guys to utilize this to the best एंड अब अच्छे तरीके से अपनी पास्ट गलतियों को रिपीट ना करते हुए यू कैन किक स्टार्ट योर प्रेपरेशन यूजिंग द कोड इकनूर सिंग यूर गेटिंग ऑल दीज डिस्काउंट्स एंड बेनिफिट्स लिंक्स आर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट Okay, well, uh, for that one, I'll give you a little background into what went inside my head back then. Um, since since a very early age, actually, I was uh, somebody who was uh, diligent in studies, somebody who was serious with studies, and uh, I uh, when you are actually that kind of a student, there's this childish enthusiasm in you to challenge yourself with uh, more difficult things. Uh, that being in the background, I'd like to tell about when I first came to know about IITs. So this was, I think, back in 2015 or 16, uh, when Sundar Pichai became the CEO of Google. So uh, the next morning, uh, there was a newspaper at my doorstep. I went to pick it up, and it said, "IIT graduate becomes the CEO of Google." Uh, now, yes, I was, uh, I was little back then, but uh, of course, I had that enthusiasm in me, that kind of childish zip, just go get it, and I was there. So uh, yeah, yeah, I actually then started to find out more about that, what IITs are, and uh, once you actually start uh, noticing that, I found more and more articles, more and more success stories. that mentioned people from this college called iits in india and uh, yes of course uh, when i i saw that uh, i was very sure that that is something i want to pursue that's something i want to at least challenge myself with and uh, i i i was lucky to have a set of parents who were actually also aware about it uh, back then and uh, they told me about the kind of community you get at a college like iit so uh, that was there that really motivated me and I, when I, when I talk about IIT Bombay, of course, IITs was then uh, uh, ticked in my head. Uh, IIT Bombay then naturally comes to you when you start to think about which is the best IIT in India. So I had to be a little biased towards that, but of course, like even today, the QS rankings came out and IIT Bombay was the best engineering college in India again. So it, it's also popular for all the right kind of reasons. Uh, you talk to the seniors; they told me that you can actually go pursue anything. You don't have to actually. pursue the core subject you will be opting for at iits there are a lot of opportunities that open up the social life of course at iit bombay is a uh, class apart from other iits i believe uh, the peer group here is uh, awesome the college life the festival there are these big names mood and go tech fest all of that i used to find out on youtube and uh, those were the little things which put together actually motivated me to join iit bombay And, I mean, it, it wasn't always such. Actually, I should mention here, it wasn't actually a very straight ride to here. Uh, it was filled with uh, my share of difficulties. It was uh, it definitely difficult. The competition is tough. But uh, there was also a moment uh, during my preparation, during my class 11th, when I thought I perhaps won't be able to make it there. Uh, but वो कहते हैं ना किसी चीज को इतनी शिद्दत से चाहो तो बुरी कायना तो उसको आपको दिलाने में लग जाती है. I truly believe in that, and things fell into place. I worked towards it. 
and uh, I was pretty happy when I got that. IIT Bombay is definitely one of the premier institutes in the country, and there's no reason why someone should not aspire for it. And congratulations to you, you're here today studying Thank in it. Thank you so much. Be happy. Thank you. So much. Uh, coming back to the question, you asked me why I did not choose an institute abroad. Uh, that's quite a good question actually, and I, I think when I mentioned that I found out about IITs back in the sixth grade, and I uh, started my little journey towards it uh, back then. Of course, I was much more serious in class 11th, and the real journey began in class 11th. But once it sets in, once you actually have an aspiration from class six, uh, class seven, I did not even think of institutes abroad. Uh, there were a lot of people who said you have a few college to your name. Uh, you you topped the National Science Olympiad. Those are the kind of things I in, engaged in back in class ninth, tenth. So you should apply uh, for an institute abroad. But I did not apply for any of those because my goal was already set. I think by the dil se I had already <laughs> placed my uh, bet on. IIT Bombay and yes of course with covid aaya to uh, our batch actually a lot of them had to uh, forcefully opt out of institutes abroad so i think i was lucky that way i did not uh, go for an institute abroad yeah. i think it's really great that what you said i is that you got it and things worked out in your favor at the end of the day it's really good to know it too anyway so you obviously are all praises about iit bombay and every student is in yeah. fact you have a youtube channel also dedicated to iit bombay which obviously yeah. speaks volumes about About your love for the institute, but I'm very curious that what prompted you to start it in the first place? What idea? What, where, where was that idea that you want an IIT Bombay YouTube channel? Right. So uh, again, this uh, a lot of this will uh, go right back to the times when I prepared for the joint entrance examination, because those are the two years of my life which was full of such decisions. Uh, so it actually goes back to that uh, when I was preparing for my joint entrance examination, I, uh, I I started noticing a pattern when there were these results of uh, my seniors or two years senior to me. Their results came out. I noticed a pattern where. A brother tops in uh, J advanced, scores a very good rank there, and then his younger brother also does that. So, of course, it's not a rule there, but I started noticing these patterns, and soon I realized I saw friends around me who had people who were already in IITs in their families, and those were the people who guided them. Those were the people who motivated them, and they actually knew the hacks of the trade, if I might say, and that kind of guidance. Though I had my parents, uh, my mother is from the non-medical side. My dad was from a medical side. I, I did have motivation in general, but there was no IIT and to motivate me. There was nobody who gave this exam before me in my family who could motivate me or tell me like, how do you actually crack it? So the the need for that guidance, the need that I felt that nobody is there for me. I made a decision back then that nobody else should perhaps in the future when we have such a technology when you have so. social media that you can uh, leverage i can reach out to people nobody else should actually feel that kind of uh, lack in their life so that that was what really motivated me to start off this youtube channel i of course i was engaged in a lot of uh, competition activities back in my school time i knew a little video editing i went for video editing competitions as well so that was something i i knew i had those skills so i can start that off and uh, of course then there was this little personal touch as well that i wanted to document the entire journey of my college life uh, sometimes i just uh, talk to my friends they ask me why did you make this uh, and i i I just tell them that it will be so great when 10 years, 15 years down the line, I'm perhaps sitting with my kids watching videos from my college life. I'll show them how I basically lived my college life. So those are the kind of things that uh, really, really make it more special and more personal. So documenting college life was, of course, one of uh, the major reasons there as well. Doesn't want to document the college life after all. Yeah, there of course, the best years. Right, right, and of course, there's. Of course, I should not uh, skip this. Uh, this is uh, definitely an important part. The uh, the monetization, the money that comes from it. I I had been somebody who always want to be wanted to be independent and not be a burden on my family in terms of education. So I I thank uh, the stars for that. I thank God for that. That I was actually able to study on my own. I got a free ship from class ten. So I did not spend a single penny of my parents since class ten. and that is something
something now iit bombay does not offer uh, scholarships to say j rankers or anything it does offer some scholarship for a certain section of society but that was not available out there so i knew there had to be an external source of income as well some something which i can actually do well and do good for myself as well so i think youtube was a great way to do that that's definitely there and should be mentioned i guess i think that's a very honest answer and i'm really glad that you felt comfortable to put it forward to us while speaking to us in this thank you so much ekno for that okay so coming to the lighter section of an engineering college Yeah, that's very true. I mean, uh, yes, three years was also perhaps one of the early exposures I had towards engineering college and uh, the kind of life they lived there. That, through the lens of the uh, movie makers at three years, I actually uh, started to picture my life, like how will my life be at IIT. So while it is true that uh, three years and movies like Chori etc. these do portray engineering life, but I do feel that they try to highlight an important social cause, and at times end. Up highlighting it dramatically. So, so while of course there are exams, there are quizzes, there are projects, uh, all of that is part of the examination. I feel perhaps times have changed, or we are lucky to have a very supportive peer group here. Uh, the diversity of choices and paths that people are following these days uh, have actually stopped the rat race at IITs. Uh, like some people consider IITs, IITians as bookworms. That's definitely not true. I can tell firsthand the kind of things people are pursuing may be in arts, music, theater, research, literature, debating, all those kinds of things. things i see so many of my batchmates doing and that just tells me that uh, there's more to engineering life that is being uh, than what is being shown in the movies uh, yeah so I, I, if i talk about life here at iits apart from all these kind of things that are happening you you can actually try and pursue anything and everything now i have been part of more than i think 10 to 12 uh, clubs i have experienced various activities going on there i have seen the uh, festivals i have seen in the clubs doing various activities uh, the technical teams technical teams here at iit bombay are doing great things i put out a vlog very recently i uh, showed how the team here at iit bombay a student team actually made a f1 car it's called the racing team of iit bombay that's going faster than most real f1 cars so students are working on that kind of technology here so uh what people are doing is crazy you enjoy seeing all those kind of things and you just feel lucky when you are here at iit bombay of course it makes for good content on youtube and <laughs> people invite me so i am able to explore more 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 of it uh that's there but yeah i think uh, that that's a sum up of how life is here at iit bombay that's really good to know and that's very interesting but ek no i like when someone who is not at iit bombay there's always a sense of aspiration and thought that what is a, an actual day like so could you just tell us are there like are how different are the daily schedules for all the bachelor's courses at iit okay. bombay particularly bachelor courses and okay. do you like ever all have classes in evening or night or is it just a myth that evening classes night classes happen at I, I, iits okay uh, so So as far as I know, I, I must say I was not on campus in my first year due to the the pandemic. So I missed a lot of that. But I know for a fact that there are night classes, there are lab classes, computer lab classes that happen at night. So what I've heard from seniors is that that was one of the best times they had in their life. The entire group of friends. Uh, actually, the computer science course in the first year is a common course for all the departments. So you have thirteen hundred kids, perhaps in batches of two uh, of six hundred six hundred. each you have all those people going uh, with you at night at 8 am after dinner uh, at 8 pm 9 pm after dinner and they flood the lab they're sitting together working on a lab assignment and of course thodi cheating meeting to chalti rehti hai bhai kitna hua kitna hua all that those kind of those are the fun things we missed because of the first year but yes classes do happen at night there are a few courses that uh, have their proper classes also in the evening time and night time and there can be professors rescheduling the normal classes to night as well so it's not very uncommon we do have uh, those kind of things here but i think it's enjoyable like people have fun because nobody likes waking up at 8 am and going for a class everybody would prefer going at 8 pm to the class 
definitely that's true that's very true so ignor are there any research projects that you have to do as a part of your course my course is okay so the ones also were pretty interesting uh, research projects here at iit mumbai are usually not enforced as such there's a dual degree program of course where you do btech plus mtech the dual degree students have to do a research project as part as uh, a compulsion to get their mtech degrees but as a btech as a student under the agwe student the bachelor's degree student uh, most of these course uh, course projects research projects are not enforced but there's a rich variety of options available for example i have a minor uh, so there's a major there's a minor uh, at iit you have an option to do a minor if you want to so i am i while my major is mechanical engineering my minor is data science and artificial intelligence so an- another anecdote uh, we had an examination it's a very uh, uh, it was supposed to be a very difficult examination we were supposed to have the entire syllabus for our uh, ds minor the minor i was talking about uh, we were supposed to have that as an exam- examination and of course it was supposed to be the first offline examination in this subject so that makes a difference so we were pretty nervous about that but we wrote a mail all of us together wrote a common email to the professor and he was very willing to change that examination to a course project so yeah that that is that is kind of things we do together and when the professor agrees to that i mean we were pretty happy we didn't have to go for that offline exam then there are of course undergraduate summer projects summer research projects which you can pursue under professors none of them are are enforced but uh, you have a lot of choices if you want to get into research that's really good to hear so in your course it is not necessarily enforced okay. but you have an option to do it yeah. oh okay fair that's got So, you know, every institute has some unique lingo that everyone knows. Everyone's going around talking to it, but Definitely. some non-IIT Bombay institute might a student might not understand it. So, why yeah. don't you teach us and our viewers some IIT Bombay lingo? Just a few words, if you can. Or uh, and I I know the problem is big because when I put out vlogs, I end up using those lingo words, and uh, people just start commenting. What does dosa mean? How can you talk to dosa? Like I'll just tell you what dosa is. But those are the kind of things which happen. So dosa is the first one. I'll teach you. Dosa means dean of student affairs. So he's the person. Yes, dean of student affairs is called dosa. So he's the person you approach when you are in trouble, when there's problems related to hostel, anything happening on campus, you approach the dosa. And if you're supposed to get a scolding from somebody for doing wrong stuff on campus, you'll go to dosa. So that's dosa. You have DAC. DAC is a word thrown around very commonly. Uh, some engineering colleges call it uh, BAC. some call it disco dac is basically disciplinary action committee dac so yeah so dac is something you're scared of all the time ki bhai dac lag jayegi ye kaam mat kar so dac is something we are afraid of uh, there's of course maggu maggu is uh, probably not uh, uh, iit bombay specific word but maggu is somebody who studies a lot it's definitely not used in a derogatory term because maggus are people you approach in the exam season and without them you're probably not passing your courses so So that's Maggu for you. Then there are more common ones like Dasi, Nelly, Atti. They are like ten out of ten, nine out of ten, eight out of ten. Insti means. Like those attitudes. Yes, Just yes. Yeah. So it's happening since a very long time. Uh, seniors come, we say AA aaya. AA kya hota hai, bhai? Dasi bol, Dasi aayi. <laughs> so that that happens. So that's how they are promoting the culture. They are passing it on. Then another very common, specific to IIT Bombay is Machaks. Infi Machaks. Infi Machaks means Machaya. You have. Uh, you've done extremely well in something of course it's also used to taunt people <laughs> when they do things terribly wrong uh, somebody slips you will say are macha just to mock them so <laughs> macha basically is used when you're doing great stuff in life in general baki aur bhi hai chote mote enthu janta i think dosa was yeah. something very fascinating i thought you would be talking about food and probably dosa is really good at iit bombay but i was taken aback so that's really yeah. i hope our viewers also enjoy the same yes. okay. Okay, so how is the hostel life in IIT Bombay? What are your curfew hours like, and how fun is it to trespass though? If ever you do, of course, because I understand that that's a secret too. Okay, luckily we do not have any curfew hours in our hostel. Like we can go out any time we want to. The curfew hours here are for boys going into girls hostel, girls going into boys hostel. That happens at 9 p.m. So if you you're a boy, you're in girls hostel, you get a call from the guard. Bhai, aaja ab, nine baje hai. 
and you have to get out so those are the only rules we have here um, i don't know if people also break that they do by the way uh, but yes i don't know how that happens i have not done any of that especially at least not on record but in general hostel life is crazy prajati i mean uh, it, it's a whole new life altogether you make new friends there are uh, new people you meet interactions with seniors i have had one of the finest conversations with seniors from iit bombay were living in my hostel they have talked about all sorts of things have motivated me a lot and those are the kind of things i enjoy when you are part of the hostel life because there are hostel specific fests and hostels in fighting hostel 6 is better hostel 5 is better hostel 3 will rule so those kind of things are very very popular on campus so you have to be like i'm an excellent an h6 person so x stands for 6 Uh, yes, and all of these hostels are actually named by various uh, mythological characters. So our H six is called Vikings. H fifteen okay. I stayed in earlier was called Olympus. Uh, etc. Etc. So those are the kind of names we have. Are these names that all of you have kept, or is are these names by the institute? Are these uh, formal names? I don't know how they started, but now they are pretty official. You have boards that say Vikings H six. Uh, so even professors and the staff know these names now. Yes, yes, it, it's out right out in the open. I mean, okay. actually, the students are the people more responsible for these kind of things. You have a proper hostel council. They come up with such decisions. They are being given some sort of fund, and they use that to put up their boards. People People change their boards almost every year. They do all sorts of things. These festivals are hundred percent done by students. Even the big ones, like which are common to the institute, Mood Indigo, all those things are handled single-handedly by students. No staff involvement, nothing. So yes, I mean these are decisions of the students mostly. So you're living in Vikings. I'm living in Vikings. I'm a Vikings fan forever. <laughs> However small the hostel room might be, I unfortunately have one of the smallest hostel rooms. Oh my god. Red That's six. not. Yes. But Vikings. Yep. Vikings. Vikings.